actually started getting into coding when I was around 10 or 13 years old and my sister saw I had an interest in video games and she took the investment in me. It was, you know, my parents of course thought, oh, she's just off playing games and they didn't really pay much attention to it and in exchange for what I call indentured servitude, I slept on my sister's couch for a summer and I babysat and she paid for me to go to computer camp or com com summer computer camp at MIT and that changed it, everything for me. You know, I realized that there were other kids my age who were building and creating all this great stuff and eventually it inspired me so much that I went back to teach at MIT when I, when I, right before college and, you know, just seeing all these other kids was really great and it was fantastic and, but it was also a good learning experience too because I realized I didn't like making video games but what I really wanted to do was web development. Actually, I moved to New York City um, after two years of college and I decided, oh, I want to work full time and I want to finish school part time. And so I ended up uh, becoming a developer full time at a nonprofit. And I thought, you know, how can I replicate the experience that I had at summer camp where it was such a fun environment? And I realized it wasn't accessible to so many people. It was it's about a thousand US dollars a week, not including accommodations or food, but it was such a great experience. And I found out about Coder Dojo through an article online and I so I tweeted and I said, you know, is there one in New York City? How can I volunteer? And they said, I think it must have been James who tweeted back and I said, no, there isn't, but you can start one. So from there, you know, I James happened to pop into town one day and I talked with him and a couple other people and I co-founded the New York City branch. So I think it's not only giving people like the skills to learn coding, the analytical thought thinking process, but the ability to explore and to see what other jobs are out there. Because when I was young, I thought that was, you know, I thought coding was just something for like engineers in like a dusty laboratory or something or doing really hard math. But there's a lot of creative things involved with it too. And there's so many different paths that you can take. And for kids to be exposed to that very early, I think is fantastic. And I think as a society, you know, you know, and Coder Dojo also has sort of its own social mission where, you know, uh, in New York City we have the ability to reach out to like underprivileged areas and to expand and and help bring them in, you know. So I'm, I'm very excited to see how Coder Dojo not only, you know, teaches kids those skills but also helps the underprivileged areas. I think that it's really important for not only, you know, more girls and more women to be involved as role models, but also for boys to see that the stereotypes aren't true, that women can be in technology, that, you know, women can be coding and building and creating. And, you know, so to get more like those role models at Coder Dojos will attract more of the girls and to get the girls in like a fun collaborative environment so that they can then come to the dojos more regularly. So I think those are all important that discussions that we've been having uh, globally, actually, with the Coder Dojo. Girls Initiative and I hope to have more of the global feedback from everybody else as well.